Beach Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us in the sanctuary here and also online. I want to remind you of the announcements that are in the bulletin about our beautiful concert that's scheduled next Sunday afternoon, July 26th, in our church sanctuary at 3.30 p.m. That will be performed by Barbara Larson, Barbara's husband, Brian, and their daughter, Jana. It's entitled Christmas in July, and our continued health and safety precautions will be in place, which includes a face mask and social distancing and limited seating. So please come and join us for this afternoon of Christmas in July. Next Sunday, July 26th at 11.15 p.m. a.m., We'll be having a congregational meeting following our worship service at 10.30 to give thanks to God for Pastor Lee's ministry with us and her heart for this community and this congregation that has made such a difference to all of us over the last four years. As we feel a deep sadness that Pastor Lee and Chris and Amelia and Ben will be leaving Florida soon, they will always be part of our hearts and our church family. This congregational meeting is for the purpose of accepting Pastor Lee's decision to depart as our associate pastor of Ormond Beach Presbyterian Church as she follows God's call as he is leading her to a new position as the pastor and head of the church staff of First Presbyterian Church in Cartersville, Georgia one hour away from her family in Carrollton, Georgia, and closer to Chris's family in South Carolina. Pastor Lee, this morning I would like to express my gratitude for the opportunity of working with you and for your ministry to this congregation. You have been such an important part of our life, and you have left your mark in so many places. I am thankful for the privilege of working with you and serving Christ in this congregation. I am sad for our loss, and I know I express that for the church family that feels a deep loss in your leaving us. What makes it more difficult is we are not able to gather with you for a reception in the Fellowship Center so that we all have a chance to tell you and Chris and Ben and Amelia in person the impact you've had on all of our lives. There are so many ways in which you have touched our hearts, and we will forever be grateful for that. I'm grateful now for the way you are actively working with our session on the transition of the ministries that you've carried during these years. Our Christian education ministry, our outreach ministry, our family ministry, and our online ministry. We know that they will continue to grow and flourish because of the way you've led them and the way our leadership is stepping forward now. And each of us has special memories of your working with us. One of the memories that stands out for me and stands out in my mind and heart is your leadership organizing our community food drive, which was the kickoff event for our 60th anniversary celebration. You capably gathered together 60 volunteers that went door to door in the neighborhood in much the same way that Ernie Haddad began the ministry of his church, knocking on doors and inviting the community to join us. And so you inspired them to gather together and go into this community. To, express, to attempt to express our love, our thanks, our prayers to, for Pastor Lee, we have a basket in the narthex for those who wish to bring a note, a card, or a letter so that you may tell Pastor Lee and her family how much her ministry has meant. Pastor Lee, there's actually a picture that I want to give you if you wouldn't mind coming up here. This picture, I think, captures one of the many moments in the life of the congregation. I'm going to take a minute and just tear that open. And
It's a collage of pictures from the 60th anniversary. The uh, pictures of you and your family gathered in the pew and a picture of our theme for soaring. And so we give that to you as a way of saying thank you, Pastor Lee, for your ministry with us through the years. Pastor Lee, I give thanks that God called you to this congregation four years ago so that you might be part of our life. Now I know that God is calling you to a new position as the pastor and the head of the church staff at the First Presbyterian Church Cartersville. And I know that God is going to bless you there as God has blessed us in your ministry here. Next Sunday, Pastor Lee will be preaching at both the 8 a.m. and the 10.30 a.m. worship service. Let's now prepare our hearts for worship. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We gather around table, font, and pulpit to root ourselves in the sacred story and grow in faith. God's teachings are our heritage. They bring joy to searching hearts. We gather in God's presence to offer our thanks and praise. Let us worship God. So many times we gather for worship, whether it is in sanctuary or 
on our couches at home. We gather for worship and our minds are spinning and we don't know where to turn or what to think. And that is time to be still and to know our God. And so we take time to lift to God our brokenness, our hurts, all that that stands between us and our God. We do so knowing and trusting that God's grace will always, always welcome us home. For it is only by the power of God that we are able to stand against evil. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin this morning. First, taking a moment of silent reflection, and then I will read our prayer of confession, and I invite you to read silently as we all Take a moment to be still and to know God's grace. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, we confess that we do not reflect your glory. We have not prepared our hearts to receive the gift of your word. We allow thorns and weeds to grow in the places where you plant the gospel. Forgive us, restore and reorder our lives by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Accomplish all that you desire in us so that we may bear good fruit to the glory of your holy name. Friends, this is the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. intercession, I invite you all to, when we are praying the Lord's Prayer, whisper that prayer quietly. As we all take time to lift that which is on our heart to our God, let us pray. Help us, O Lord. Help us to listen for the power of your Holy Spirit. 
as that spirit blows through our hearts and lives, through this community and the world. Let us listen to Christ's love and his call. May we plant ourselves in your rich soil, and may we grow in you so that we will live as your witnesses. Thank you, O oh God, for this community where all your people can grow. And we thank you for your call as you send us out to share your love and invite others to grow in you. We pray now for the world where we are sent. Help us to reach out, planting seeds of love, hope, and encouragement in this world that so desperately needs to know Christ. We pray for his peace to touch every corner and every people. We ask for your wisdom to be with the leaders of the world and the leaders of our nation. Be with those who are even now standing for peace, working for our safety, and doing all they can to fight the pandemic. We ask your blessing upon the many officers, social workers, and medical professionals who are working so very hard each and every day. We pray, O oh God, for parents and children who are facing difficult decisions and confusion and uncertainty. May your spirit blow through their hearts and their lives, giving them comfort, assurance, and the sure certainty of Christ who is with us. We pray for those who are known to this community, naming to you, Trevin, that your healing will be with him, and Marsha Gilhood, as she has surgery this week. As our leaders are ordained and installed this morning, we ask your blessing upon them. We thank you that they said yes. We ask that you will fill them with your power, that they may follow you and lead this congregation into the future that you have for them. In the silence, O oh God, we lift to you those prayers that are on our hearts. We pray now in our hearts, in our homes, wherever we may be, lifting to you the prayer Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. turn now to a reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the 10th chapter in the 13th chapter it is a seed parable listen now for the word of the Lord that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake such a great crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. 
Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises, on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. May God add the Holy Spirit to give us understanding as we apply this word to our lives. In the front of our sanctuary, the color, color, colorful banners that hang behind the projection screen tell the story of the church, of who we are and what God has called us to do. They are our mission statement in pictures. We are growing to know God and living to show God. And when you look at them, you notice the prominent image of the seed planted in good soil that begins to grow because of the vital connection with the Word of God and in time grows to full maturity so that our faith is able to respond to difficult situations to get out of the boat and face the storms of life. In this time of pandemic, when it seems like our life has been turned upside down, our mission and purpose as disciples of Jesus Christ is to sow the seed of the gospel, to announce the good news in word and deed that God is alive, our God is at work in the world. Our God stands beside all who suffer and are sick and are carrying heavy burdens. And our God offers us a living hope that keeps us going on the absolute hardest days. So the first question this morning is that who planted the seed of faith in your life? Who helped you to take the first step toward believing that Jesus loves you and wants to be part of your life? For me, it was both my mother and father whose words and whose actions planted the seed and helped me to believe. For some, it was a grandmother who read the Bible to them and began to pray with them for the first time in their young lives. For others, it was, it was, perhaps it was a friend who sat down with you one day and said to you, let me tell you how Jesus made a difference in my life. Each story 
is an illustration of the parable that Jesus so to told in which a sower went out to sow and scattered the seed in all kinds of different soils and places along the path, among the thorns, and on rocky ground. And yes, in good soil, and that seed grew to become a harvest. And our life is richer and better because those people who planted the seed in our life loved us so much that they wanted to share this precious gift with us. Second question for us to think about this morning is why is it that the seed of faith grows to full maturity in some people and in others is trampled on, choked out, and never really grows to its full potential? Now, you might know this personally, you may know somebody that you can think of right now who perhaps wandered away from God for a period of time. They didn't have time for worship or prayer or for God. And the fire of faith went out. But then something happened in their life that reignited the flame of faith so that today it burns so bright I hope if that person is you, you'll take a minute today and praise God for the way in which faith comes alive at different seasons in our life. And we know some of the things that help that flame to grow, that seed to grow. It's worship and prayer. Worship and prayer reminds us that God is God, and God is the one, the only one, that we bow our life before. It's Bible study that gives us knowledge of God's will and purpose. We hear God's word speaking to us. Knowledge of God's will leads to understanding, and understanding leads to action and living out the implications of what we know and understand to be true. And we need fellowship with other believers. How we know that in this time of pandemic when we have been isolated from each other. We need good friends who are with us in our times of trial, friends we can lead on, friends who keep us from falling away. And the third question that I really want you to ponder this morning is where and to whom is Jesus sending us today to sow the seed of the gospel? What I want you to imagine, if you can, is that as you hear this parable this morning, you are the sower that is being sent out to sow the good news of Jesus Christ among people who need to hear that and embrace that in their life. There's a famous benediction by Richard Halverson that gives us a clue about where we might go. He says, wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose for your being there. And Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. Now imagine some of the places where God might be sending you today to share the good news. Perhaps it's with the person who is helping you at Publix or Walmart to purchase your groceries. And maybe it might be just a brief encounter where you say, thank you for helping me. And you might ask them if there's something you can lift up in prayer on their behalf. They may be so surprised and so pleased that you care enough. Or imagine that you are sowing the seed with your family, with members of your family who are carrying a heavy burden. Ask them, what is the weight that you can help them to carry with prayer before God? You know, sometimes I think we just overthink the good news that we're called to plant in 
people's lives. We imagine that it's supposed to be difficult to understand. It's not. It is so simple and straightforward. The good news that we are called to share is that Jesus loves you. He always has and he always will. The one who loves you knows you. He knows your whole life story. He knows every skeleton in your closet. He knows all our sin, our shame, our dishonesty. He knows our shallow faith and our feeble prayer life. And yet, he stands before us and he dares us to trust, to trust him. That in all the moments of our life, he is going to be there by our side. Life in all its fullness begins when we believe that we are loved by Christ and we give ourselves completely to that love. And life for someone outside the doors of this church may begin today when you take a step and share with them the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. Amen. There are many ways in which we offer ourselves to God. We offer our offerings, our financial gifts to God, recognizing that every gift that we have comes from God. But we also offer our lives in service. And so this morning, one of the ways we are thinking about the thanksgiving and the offering of our lives is by ordaining and installing elders and deacons who are serving in the life of this church on our session and our board of deacons. And so as I call your name, would you please just stand where you are seated so that we may honor you and give thanks for your willingness to serve. 
serving as an elder on the session, Virginia Norad, Virginia. Serving on the session, Samuel Thomas. Serving on our board of deacons, Pat Thomas. And serving on our board of deacons, Candy Christmas. Friends, we give thanks that God has called you by name to serve in the life as a church. Now we'd like to install you for this ministry. Friends, do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? If so, please say, I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, please say, I do, and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry and obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture, and will you be continually guided by our confessions? If so, please say, I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity? And will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, please say, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, please say, I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, please say, I do. And will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, please say, I will. Virginia and Sam, will you be a faithful ruling elder? watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will. And Candy and Pat, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concerns, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. And in your ministry will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ, if so please say, I will. Do we, the members of Ormond Beach Presbyterian Church, accept Virginia and Sam, Candy and Pat, as elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of the church to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do. Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, please say, we do. Amen. Now, Pastor Lee will lead us in the prayer of installation. Let us join together in prayer. Precious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants, whom you call through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Jesus Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. 
in the walk of faith and for the work of ministry. Give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Amen. Virginia and Sam, Pat and Candy, we thank you for saying yes to serve this church, saying yes to God's voice, knowing that God has given you gifts for this ministry. And so we thank you. And we look forward to this coming year of serving together side by side as we follow Jesus Christ. join together in prayer as we dedicate our life to the care and to the work of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, take and use each one of us in your, in your mission and purpose as servants. We pray that as you have planted that seed of faith in us and as it grows, so we may discover the places in our life and in our world where we can make a difference for you. Use us and use all the gifts that we bring pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. A sower went out to sow, and today you are that sower called by Christ to sow the seed, the good news of his love. Keep your eyes open, your ears open, your hearts open to discover all the places where he's sending you. And as he sends you, he will use you and bless you to make a difference for his kingdom. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you today and forever. Amen. Thank you. 